Mary Sweeney is an American film producer, writer and editor. She's arguably best known for her 20 year collaboration with David Lynch. In this video essay, I'm going to be looking at Mary's work regarding two case studies, Mulholland Drive and The Lost Highway, and how she has developed and expanded the grammar of film editing. David Lynch is known for his dreamlike surrealist films. His cinematic style is in fact so distinct that it has been dubbed to Lynchian. For typical Hollywood films, the editing style would most commonly be referred to as an example of continuity editing, where the narrative takes on a linear fashion which is overtly logical and rational. To encapsulate David's Lynchian style, Mary had to take a different approach in order to articulate the veiled lucidity of his films. His films appear to adopt their own sense of coherence, a certain fluidity resembling someone's train of thought or rather a dream. In the cases of The Lost Highway and Mulholland Drive, the narratives centre around Diane and Fred, both of which are existing in a non-reality. In order to convey the Lynchian style, Sweeney begins with cutting both films in a similar fashion, with a car descending down a dark road. Sweeney choosing to leave the time between takes long and languid in order to convey this dreamlike descent into non-reality. Dialogue not beginning for five minutes in Mulholland Drive, and almost six in Lost Highway. As the narratives run on, Sweeney incorporates a series of fades into both films, a further example of the liquidity in regards to the flowing between scenes. For Mulholland Drive, this begins almost instantly. The image of Betty's face is superimposed upon the couple's jitterbug dancing. This then fades into an almost innocuous POV shot in bed, the first hint that we are about to enter Diane's dreamlike false reality. In The Lost Highway, Mary utilises fades for a similar purpose, the first portion of the film being slow and languid, Sweeney choosing to fade in and out of scenes in an ethereal fashion, mirroring that of a fragmented memory. Sweeney also hints with her cuts at the fantasy-like state of mind both films' main protagonists share. An example from Mulholland Drive begins with a fade from a shot of palm trees to Betty laid down, seemingly lost in whimsical thoughts over the image of Hollywood. In The Lost Highway, the scene similarly begins with a fade, to Bill laid down, deep in reverie, intercut with scenes of his performance as a musician, and his wife leaving the club with another man. It's not only the transitions Sweeney chooses between cuts to allude to the illusory nature of Lynch's work, but also, of course, the placement and timing of cuts. In Mulholland Drive, the scene preceding the infamous Winky scene begins with Rita laying her head to rest. The placement of this cut once again reminds us of the non-reality of the film, in particular the constant references to dreams, as following this scene it cuts again to Rita, who is still asleep. Sweeney is renowned for her ability to build tension in Lynch's films. When it comes to scenes of dialogue, the first example would be the party scene from The Lost Highway. It is cut in a simple shot reverse shot style, typical of many two person dialogue scenes, however it's the pacing of the cuts that set it apart from the conventional Hollywood editing style. Firstly, a number of takes linger on both the mystery man and Fred's faces before they begin talking and after, creating a remarkably uneasy effect. We've met before, haven't we? I don't think so. Where was it you think we met? At your house, don't you remember? If you compare the pacing of this scene to a more conventional Hollywood film in regards to editing, such as The Dark Knight, you can see that even with a similarly intense exchange of dialogue between the Batman and the Joker, the cuts don't linger on either character before or after they speak. Even to a guy like me, that's cold. Where's Dan? Those mob fools want you gone so they can get back to the way things were. But I know the truth. There's no going back. You've changed things. Forever. And why do you want to kill me? Similarly, in Mulholland Drive, Sweeney again establishes her signature cutting style and unique ability to build tension with a slower average shot length. Like this, except for the light. And I'm scared like I can't tell you. Of all people, you're standing right This take there. alone, not cutting, for over 40 seconds. These two scenes are on the surface mundane. They are shot in seemingly normal, everyday places. Yet it's the pace of the edits that emphasize the eeriness or the illusory nature of the situation and set them apart from reality. This is something that is unabating throughout her work. 
It's apparent that Mary has a pensive approach to editing, a deeply thoughtful and reflective style that forces you to draw your attention to the images at hand. In The Straight Story, a far more overtly logical example of one of Lynch's films, her signature slow-paced style still runs throughout, with aesthetic overlays and fades, a story that is visually paced like a nostalgic memory. This unique consistency sets her apart from the conventional, fast-paced Hollywood editing style and establishes her as an influential editor who has expanded the grammar of film editing.